In today's episode of Minute Lab, we take a look at falling water drops in slow motion. This is the shape of a water drop falling at terminal velocity. As you can easily see, it's not tear shaped or spherical as many people might expect. But that's only the shape of a water drop in its equilibrium state. As you can clearly see in this picture, disconnecting water drops are far away from equilibrium and they have more of a tear shape. How do we get from here to here? In the course of getting from the initial state to the equilibrium state, the falling water drops oscillate between oblate and prolate form. As this high speed footage clearly reveals, the oscillation frequency of a water drop depends considerably on its size. Small water drops oscillate faster, bigger ones slower. By analyzing high speed video of falling water drops, I determined the oscillation frequencies for water drops of different sizes. For a 6mm drop, a 3.5mm drop, and a 2mm drop. This footage of four individual 6mm water drops shows how consistent the oscillation frequencies really are. Can we predict the oscillation frequency of different water drops? Can we work out the important variables that influence the oscillation frequencies of the water drops? A good starting point to tackle this problem is the equation that governs the oscillation of a mass on a spring. F equals the square root of K divided by M, where M is the mass of the object attached to the massless spring and K the spring constant. The oscillation of water drops is driven by surface tension instead of a spring, so substituting K with the surface tension should be a good idea. The mass involved in the oscillation should be proportional to the mass of the drop, which can be expressed as its density rho times its radius cubed. From this point we are just missing a constant in order to get to the Rayleigh theory of drop oscillation. How good can this basic theory describe the observed frequencies you ask? Very good is the answer. 